Autopilot mode enabled. Hello and welcome. Today we are in the tier 10 Japanese aircraft carrier, the Hakuryu. This was a match back from closed beta. Shortly after the Hakuryu was actually added to the game, you can tell by the fact that there are five torpedo bomber squadrons. This was back during a time when World of Warships was a real man's game, a real one versus one game. You see, you had your aircraft carrier on one side and then you had the enemy aircraft on the other side and then you had another 22 really bad players who were most often just confused. You see, the main way that they usually misplayed is that they didn't pick an aircraft carrier in port. They picked something else, which is obviously a huge mistake. Also, you might have noticed that right at the start of the game, I headed straight for the map border, and that's because the CV is the target of the only other real player in this match. That is the enemy CV, and you need it to survive at all costs. You might have also noticed that I flew my torpedo bombers in a circle for a while at the start. That's because I wanted to wait for all of them, so I could group them up. Uh, that way I would have to spend less amount of time in Antire with my torpedo bombers. And that was quite important. And this is actually fairly important because Antire could be quite scary, especially from ships like Des Moines or Baltimore's. Now, there aren't that many tier 10 ships though, so this means that the Antire isn't quite as scary. But cruisers with their defensive fire were pretty damn brutal. And so you wanted to minimize all of these kinds of things. So, there's the enemy uh, CV coming in with torpedo bombers. Surprisingly, she didn't actually group up quite as well as I did. You can see there's only three planes over there, whereas I have all five torpedo bombers. But, as you can guess, um, she is heading straight for me. Because if she can sink me, you know, she knocks me out of the game and then she can do whatever she wants for the rest of the game. Often, you would have cruisers helping the CV survive, because it was really, really, really important that they do. But here, you know, that's not the case. For those who joined later on in World of Warships, now you might be wondering, where are the fighters? And well, fighters weren't that popular. Fighters existed, but they didn't have the strafing mechanic back then. So fighter gameplay was kind of just click on the, pl on the enemy planes and that was it. So... The Hakuryu was mostly about torpedo bombs, at least I think they didn't have the fighter mechanic. Strafing, I mean. Okay, so the enemy CV seems to be coming in for an attack, but I'm already scraping the border, so this is going to be somewhat difficult for the enemy. And especially since uh, he's not striking all at once, there's a good chance I might survive this. By the way, you can notice I can actually control with WASD my ship. I would love to have that again. I'm also not actually paying attention to my own planes. As I know they're safe, and they're just idling, it's more important to try to survive this, because as long as I can survive, you know, I, I can do whatever I want with uh, freedom, because it takes a long time for this strike to happen. I mean, it's already f almost four minutes into the match. Okay, I took 14k, this is another one, and there are more planes coming, but I mostly survived that one. But still, it took almost four minutes for the enemy CV to do that strike. And you can see that that did a lot of damage. I am flooding right now, but I'm mostly waiting for the dive bombers to finish so I can damage control party. But hey, it seems the enemy Hakuri is not going to be quite as lucky as I was. Hello? Group 6, returning. Group 2, returning to ship. Group 3, returning. Group 3. Well, why didn't he, you know just dodge <clears throat> a nice devastating strike right there the 11 torpedo bomber hit hits was all it took to sink that uh, how could you now you can see why i headed for the map border right because if all of that had struck me i would have been gone immediately and that would be my game would have ended there so now uh the obviously i would use the dive bombers to just try to strike uh, battleships because you have them, so why wouldn't you use them, right? By the way, look at the minimap. You've actually played this map before. It, it is Islands of Ice. However, look at the southern part. Look at that maze. So many islands. 
That was Islands of Ice before global warming. Sadly, nowadays there are many, many fewer islands and that isn't nearly as interesting in my opinion. I really like this map, but it, it is very large and stuff is really spread out. Anyway, um, now I tried to do a follow-up on this uh, Izumo over there, I believe it's an Izumo at least. But you can see that my planes are doing this derpy circle. You see, you had to attack from the right angle. So if you started the attack too late and the plane couldn't turn in time, it would act instead do a derpy circle around. And uh, you can see that I'm failing this quite a lot. This one was actually quite a problem because the UI back then wasn't, wasn't nearly as fluid as it is nowadays. And on top of that, um, you know, you, you had to line it up properly. If you didn't, uh, you didn't get anything from it. You would just do the circle and it's fine against the Mizumo here because it didn't have that much anti-air. But imagine doing that against, say, I don't know, a Des Moines or something. You would probably lose all of your planes when you mess up. Here, you might have noticed that uh, I pulled off that one die bomber. Because I want because the pro priority is obviously on the torpedo bombers since they're so much scarier, and so I would like to land all of my torpedo bombers, wait for all of them to recharge or si to essentially cycle through them, and the dive bombers can simply just wait. Essentially, you would have to try to queue up the planes in the proper order. So now we launch the torpedo bombers again. And the dive bombers will simply wait until torpedo bombers are done, then they can go do their thing. Now, notice that the enemy is actually pushing on both sides, which is something I kind of wish we had nowadays as well, but we don't nearly as much. And I do only have 22k HP, so I'm probably going to move around a little bit to try to keep my ship safe. Because enemies did go for the CV decently often. And consider that it takes quite a while for the CV to go do a strike. Here, I actually split up the torpedo bombers. Because you don't need all five of them anymore, since the enemy doesn't have tier 10 battleships with huge HP pools. And it's not quite as vital to uh, absolutely delete the enemy ship, right? Okay, now that the torpedo bombers are done, these dirty die bombers can finally go and land. <laughs> Those peasants. The torpedo bombers, though, will go after this Izumo that has lost a whole bunch of HP to fires. And they probably should be able to finish her off. I even tell my team that I will kill the Izumo. I am that confident. I mean, there really isn't all that much the Izumo can do. She can turn in, and that's what you should do. If you have an attack from so many torpedo bombers, what you should do is turn in, but you should already turn in when the planes are coming. If you start reacting when you see the torpedo bombers, it's way too late. You're already dev-struck at that point. You just don't know it yet. Ooh, this is, this is fine, okay, guys? No problem there. But now, you see a bit of a blunder. You see, there is a Des Moines. Off screen still right now, but you can see a few drops over there. And that Des Moines has defensive fire active, which means that the drops uh, pattern is huge. And there's a lot of anti air damage, which means that this Nagato is going to be completely safe. So, I suppose the balance consideration back then was that uh, you were supposed to group up against a uh, ship or planes. And this obviously did work, right? If you had ships like the Moines, etc., it was fine. It's just that I guess Wargaming never really considered that this doesn't make for very interesting gameplay. Back then, I was actually kind of okay with this because I was mostly thinking about winning and losing and I didn't care about individual performances or how fun or unfun it was. But nowadays, my focus has definitely shifted and I definitely wouldn't find this even slightly acceptable. Because this is ridiculous, right? I imagine being that Mogami over there. By the way, that Mogami should actually be a tier 7 ship. Or could at least be. I'm not actually sure. I guess once we see her again, we'll know. We are probably going to win this. There's still a chance we might not. Because, you know, the enemy does control many more caps, but... It's a low chance. 
Okay. Oh yeah, no, this isn't a Mogan. This is a Miyoko. My bad. Miyoko is tier 8, I think. And uh, did you see the size of that circle? That's because Miyoko used defensive fire. And that means that the drop circle for an eye bomber is absolutely enormous. And it's basically... You can't hit anything with that. Your drop circle is bigger than entire airfields. And so you would have to simply wait until the Miyoko's defensive fire runs out. But it's okay. Um, we have time. And there are a lot of torpedo bombers in the air in a little bit. And now the defensive fire has run out, so the drop is decently easy, but it's still RNG. And nowhere near as scary as die bomber drops are nowadays. But the torpedo bombers are <clears throat> much, much, much more scary. These are gonna go after the Iowa, and one of them is going to peel off to try and go after the uh, Miyoko, because you only need one, really. The worst thing you can do against uh, torpedo bombers, by the way, is to turn away. The second worst thing is to just keep sailing and without reacting. What you should do is always turn into them. But of course, you couldn't always do that, so sometimes you would just be screwed. But doing what that Miyoko is doing is usually a recipe for disaster. Especially if you only have HP to take one torpedo. And there she goes. By the way, uh, you didn't see it this game because there was only one destroyer, but another thing that happened commonly was you would just cross drop the destroyer. So you would drop uh, torpedo bombers from both sides at the same time so that it would be in a cross pattern. And so the destroyer would have either no chance of avoiding those or very, very, very low chance of avoiding them. Usually you could play around with speed and that would mess up the CVs often, but it wouldn't always work out for you. And that's a high caliber. Devastating strike number three. Gee, I see nothing wrong with this, okay? This is perfectly fine and balanced. So I guess we hold all of the capstones, so um, it's purely mopping up this Des Moines and the last battleship, whatever it is. By the way, if you're wondering why are there no names for ships, etc. That's because back then we didn't even have the option to turn that on. You would have to hold down the Alt key to be able to see uh, the full UI thing. Because Wargaming back then was worried that if they had an option to turn it on all the time, it would negatively impact performance. And I'm not kidding there. That was an actual consideration and it actually did affect performance. The game ran worse, but if you had a high-end system it didn't really matter. But I'm guessing on a low-end system, this made a big difference. Also, another tale from uh, closed beta. At one point, uh, Wargaming forgot to give armor to Yamato turrets. Or, I suppose it wasn't they forgot to give, give her armor. But the turrets had 10 times lower armor than they should. Which basically meant that AP from even destroyers was able to permanently knock out turrets. And back then turrets were much easier to knock out, so Yamato's lost their turrets very, very quickly. It was pretty funny. But then again, destroyers were also, I would say, more powerful. There was no hydro, there was no radar. You could uh, chain smoke, that is, you would put the smoke screen down, you would wait until the smoke screen runs out, and you can use your smoke screen again immediately. So the level of power of different chip classes was different, but CVs were certainly on top. Also, if you'd like to see more matches of RTS CVs, let me know. I do have a few other matches left over. Quite a few, actually. But I don't know if I've maybe made videos of them. But here, three devastating strikes. Sank four ships, as usually do. 2700 base XP. And this is around 220k damage or so. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time. Group three returning. Group two returning to ship.